Welcome to the George Price Center for Peace and Development. We are here thanks to God's help and the people's support. Belize became a sovereign and independence nation on September the 21st, 1981. And four days later, a member state of the United Nations. The center works for peace and development in our region. From Belize, the new Central American nation in the heart there of the There is no Caribbean need basin. to fear freedom. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19.21 NIV On January 15, 1919, Belize City heard the first cries of a newborn George Price, son of William Cadle and Irene Cecilia Price. Little did anyone know that this voice would one day be heard throughout the entire country, proclaiming a vision for Belize to become a proud, vibrant, independent nation. The independence of Belize means freedom for all Belizeans. It will benefit every one of us. It calls on us to unite and to move forward in patriotic commitment to a better Belize. George enjoyed a carefree childhood in the now famous house on 3 Pickstock Street with his 10 siblings. Being of strong Catholic faith, his parents enrolled George at Holy Redeemer Primary School and later at St. John's College, where he entered as a boarder. His siblings and classmates have fond memories of growing up with George. We both joined the Holy Redeemer Boy Scouts. We were both close together then. We used to camp out together. He's always in good humor, enjoying some little jokes, give some, giving some of his own also. I, I suppose he surprised a lot of persons because George Price was a very quiet person. Nobody would imagine that he would ever be a politician. On September 10, 1931, 12-year-old George narrowly escaped death when a major hurricane struck Belize City, totally destroying the college he was attending. The storm claimed the life of 22 of his fellow students and teachers, together with many other Belizeans. But as his father later testified, George was saved for a higher mission. When at age 16, George felt a call to the priesthood. This prophetic claim appeared to be fulfilled. He attended the minor seminary of St. Augustine in Missouri, USA, and the major seminary in Guatemala. Belize was experiencing a very hard time. It was just after the infamous world crisis of 1931, when the stock market crashed and everything became very economically depressed. With the raging war in Europe preventing him from traveling to Rome to continue his studies, and his father now ailing at home, George's life path met an unexpected curb. He decided to return to Belize and through his first employer became involved in politics. The higher mission only now became clear. What followed was that the Second World War started, and during that period, there was a scarcity of almost everything. The salary of a person in those days was 25 cents a day, and uh, in some instances, not even a salary. They were given a ration. It was George's strong sense for social justice that brought out the leader in him. On December 31, 1949, the British government devalued the British Honduras dollar. It was recognized that this would bring additional hardship to the people of Belize at a time of large-scale unemployment and poverty. That very night, a group of young Belizean leaders, George Price included, formed the People's Committee to protest the actions of the colonial government. The peaceful, constructive Belizean revolution had begun. They began to inform the people more. They had public meetings and um, rallies and demonstrations and port parades. It started in Belize City, but it spread throughout the country that this was the salvation of the people. The people received it even though they did not understand well 
what this movement was. But because of the, the, their suffering, they saw a ray of hope, better life for the workers, better life for the farmers, better life for, for every, all Belizeans. After months of protest marches and meetings, the committee evolved into the People's United Party. On September 29, 1950, the party's constitution proclaimed the goal of political and economic independence, a better life for all Belizeans. He led by action and example. He didn't lecture you or tell you well, this is the way to do it. Setting the path, uh, steering the course to his own action, to his own example. In 1956, George was elected the leader of the PUP. He visited the length and breadth of the country in his famous Land Rover, reaching villages through the mud, pristine jungle and streams to rally the people to join as one in the plight for independence for Belize. He has a method that we qualified as forward ever, backward never. People remember the term wake up and work on the radio every morning. Wake up Belize, we invite you to wake up and work. We send the partners for development our very best wishes and warmest greetings. To face life and the world alone is a frightening thing, but together, as brothers in partnership, we have confidence and we can feel the joy of living. We are not without hope in the future. Then he said, we unite to build a nation. He's compassionate. He, he believes in people. He loves people. He cares for people. And he knows your name. You're not just a voter. You're a person. I remember, for example, we were in Colombo, Sri Lanka, at one of the meetings of the non-aligned movement. Sitting around us, uh, people like Fidel Castro, Yasser Arafat, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the, the South American um, writer, all these people around. And he treated each one as an equal. The conversations that Mr. Price had with all these leaders whose names are down in the history books are simple, ordinary conversations. These are conversations about yourself, how you feel, your family, your children, what you look forward to. On the international scene, George skillfully managed to gain support for Belize's quest for independence. An unfounded claim by Guatemala to Belize's territory complicated matters, yet it did not prove a match for George Price's leadership. With sheer determination, he steered the country from the rough seas to a safe haven of an independent Belize. Now that we are back home, the work must go on to carry out our theme on Independence Day. The creation continues. Mr. Price was very insistent that the objective of the nationalist movement in Belize was the attainment of uh, political independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity. This was the, the rallying cry of the nationalist movement. I think he developed the diplomatic skills as he went along. The diplomatic finesse that Mr. Price demonstrated when he first entered the United Nations was a, a man born to the manor. He had never had that kind of experience before. His background as a, as a businessman, as a priest, as a politician in Belize had never prepared him for the corridors of the United Nations. You would want to know how Mr. Price approached people. He approached them very, very simply, and particularly in the corridors of power, in the corridors of the United Nations, or in the capitals uh, of the world, he would walk into a room and he would say to the nearest person, I am George Price, who are you? The you eventually ended up to be either a Minister of Foreign Affairs of some uh, country that we needed to talk to, or an ambassador of a friendly or perhaps an unfriendly uh, country. All the countries represented at the United Nations and in the Non-Aligned Movement, we treated as friends. That was the lead that Mr. Price gave us. If you want to have them on your side, you begin by being on their side first. 
It was little over 30 years after George Price and his companions formulated their vision for Belize on September 21st, 1981, that the Union Jack was lowered and at last the Belizean flag proudly flew over our independent country. We dedicate this new flag of independence to the people and government of Belize secure in its sovereignty and owner of all its territory. Belize, with the help of God and the support of its people, will stand upright and will do its duty to bring peace, stability and prosperity to our region. Pero como socio bienvenido, el Reino Unido ha convenido ayudarnos a preservar y promover la paz the higher mission, which William Cadle Price envisioned for his son, seemed to have come to fruition. Yet George's vision for Belize did not stop there. Much has been done, but much more has yet to be done. And we feel with a state of independence, we can do the much more that is yet to be done. During his two tenures as prime minister, he pushed for revolutionary reforms and social justice for all Belizeans. To speak of George Price is really to speak of Belize. To think of George Price is to think of Belize. We look back and see that this is the man, his beliefs, his values that were the guiding light that steered Belize from a colonial backwater to what it is today, a sovereign, democratic state in Central America in the Caribbean region. And the amazing thing of George Price is that he was able to do it with conservative leaders like Margaret Thatcher of Britain at the time, as well as with revolutionaries like Fidel Castro of Cuba and Omar Torrios of Panama. The June 1979 edition of Tropic of the Miami Herald featured George Price in an article Bargain Price. George Price runs his country for about $1.60 an hour and still has a little left over for those who really need it. His modest lifestyle and personal honesty have remained on question and admired even by his opponents. I've been amazed at, at his modesty. Uh, you know, people who fly very high have a great problem going back to Earth. But uh, my recollection and even the present situation where Mr. Price is in, now as the father of the nation, makes him the Kipling man. He walks among kings, but he keeps the common touch. He is satisfied with the minimal comfort. He doesn't have a fan in his house, no air condition, no television. He doesn't have luxurious furniture. He has his rocking chair. He has a round table. And if I could recall, he told me that was where the revolution started. That was where the first meeting of the People's Committee was founded in 1949. And I would say like 10 years ago, I had to twist his hand to get a little fridge okay, for him to at least have a couple bottles of cool water. This trip to Mexico, when I came back, I bought one pair of um, Zaga was the brand then, briefs. And we didn't have the Friendship Bridge, it was an old crank ferry and everything, and uh, the customs house was just an old shed essentially. And uh, so he told me, well boys, you have to declare to the officers what you've purchased, you know. I went to quote my bag of briefs, the customs officer just looked at me and smiled and he said, that's all right, you know. But I think what Mr. Price was telling us was, you render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. I was a little boy and of course I sat back and listened to all the conversation and learned a lot about where our country was and where it was going. And I remember one time he was talking about a university in Belize. And this was in the 60s when you only have about 90 odd thousand people you see. So because in Merida they had a university and they only had a little more than 100,000 people. The man was thinking way ahead of his time, you see. From seminarian to politician, George Price remained strong in his Christian faith and his life's purpose of serving God and his country never faded. I would like to see the, the people praying more. 24 hours a day can be a 24 hours of prayer, wanting to do the right thing. I would like to see they're giving more, um, all of us, not myself, give more weight to the spirit than to the material.
Mr. Price was, is, and was a prayerful man, and he exemplified that in his daily life as a young man, and he continued that practice as, as the Prime Minister. And I think he probably acquired strength from that to be able to persevere in, in politics. Although, without a doubt, the most well-known public figure of Belize since the 1950s, George Price has curiously remained the most private person. Very few are privileged to truly know George Price, the individual. When we would travel in the, in the remote areas and we know that midday would catch us away from restaurant, we would normally go with a pack bread, a can of corned beef, um, sometimes a little pack of brown sugar, bottle of water and some lime. At midday or at 5 to 12 we would stop, we'll get an Atlanta Rover bonnet, prepare the lime juice, open the canned beef, sometimes we'll leave it a little while and the vehicle bonnet for the sun to warm it, then we make sandwich. In the days of the Land Rover, anybody that was on the road hitchhiking, if they would hear a machine coming and they looked down the road and saw that Land Rover and the blue and white flag waving, that individual was the happiest person because he knew for sure that he will get a lift. But he had some questions for whoever he picked up. He was always there to make conversation and find out the condition of people. Although officially retired from the political scene, George Price remained active in a number of international initiatives, such as the Council for the Freely Elected Heads of Governments, working with his good friend Jimmy Carter. He received national and international recognition, being awarded the orders of Belize, Mexico, Venezuela, Honduras, Cuba, and CARICOM. After the Belize had achieved its political independence, Mr. Price uh, was invited along with other outstanding leaders to join the heads of freely elected governments at the Carter Center by President Jimmy Carter. The question may be asked, well, why George Price? And the simple answer is that he is the man that established democracy in Belize. This man can be considered one of the greatest moral and political leaders in the world. Little Belize has, in many instances, captured the imagination of the world and oftentimes when George Price was Prime Minister. To date, George Price's vision for Belize remains one of hope for the continued peaceful development of his country and the people he so loves. My hope and wish for the people that we all grow together, we all enjoy the benefits of independence because there are benefits, but there also are problems which must be solved. We use the benefits to solve and to rid ourselves of the bad things that are around us. Very many thanks for your visit. We trust that you have learned more about the people of Belize, its history, and its 